And here we are, already having the technology problems. How about that? Anyway, I'm glad you guys stuck with me. I'm Joanne Johnson, and this is The Tipping Point. Thank you guys so much for coming back every Monday and Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard, and for also, also watching the replay, if that's what you're doing. We want to thank all of our friends from all over the world who tune into this show. Um, we've got so many people from Nepal and Germany, Italy, um, just all kinds of people who actually watch the show, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being a part of what we do and for supporting us. If you would, make Make sure that you share this with all of your friends. Let people know to tune in. Let them know to like um, and to comment all over the tipping point slash upstate. We appreciate you. Tonight, we have got a friend of mine who I'm super excited that she's here. Her name is Paige, and she is from the planet 93.3. You know her, you love her, and she does more than just be one of the most wonderful radio personalities on the airwaves, but she is an actress and a producer, and she's here to tell us all about herself and the things that she has going on. How hey. are you? <laughs> I am here. You are here. And all. I'm so happy. But um, yeah, let's talk about getting into the acting. And, you know, I've been doing radio for, I don't want to say, 20 something years. Do you believe that? No. Same thing for that long. <laughs> But I've loved it. And um, so I know you're wondering how I got into acting and how that all happened. So I'll tell you exactly what happened. Um, about four years ago, my husband suffered a massive heart attack. I took a shower and I thought it, I heard some noise and I thought it was just a dog, but I found my husband face down and I tried to bring him back to life. It was, it was the most horrendous thing that I've ever gone through. He passed away. He had a massive heart attack. He didn't survive. And for about two years, I just was lost. I didn't know what to do. Um, I was depressed, very lonely. And uh, someone approached me and asked me if I wanted to star in a, a comedy. And I thought, you know, I haven't done any acting since college and, you know, so many years ago. And I thought, you know what? What do I have to lose? Yeah. And what do I have to gain? Maybe I can meet some friends. I can get out of the house. And and so I decided, well, yeah, I'm going to try acting. I want to be an actress again. And so I got a chance to star in a, a comedy with um, my dear friend, Chad Dudley. And I know you spoke with him. And we'll get into what we're doing now, he and Chad. And um, so I, I just, just decided to do it. Why not? What do I have to lose? You know? So the you... thing that can happen, I can do it and I'll hate myself or, you know, critics are, are, are say something that I was terrible. But what I found is, is it just was an escape and to be someone else for a day and read a script. And um, it's what I really needed. So, I you know, it's interesting, Paige. It's interesting that you say that. And first of all, I'm so sorry about your husband. And for those who don't know, you know, that that is what happened to you a few years back. And we can't even imagine how devastating that is. I mean, I'm sure some of us can, but grief is such an interesting thing to go through. And it's not the same for everybody. Everyone has a different experience. And I love the fact that once you began to process your feelings, an opportunity came to you by way of acting. And you thought, let me just see if I can do it. And it's really panned out for you. And I love that for you. But it's it was about a risk for you, maybe in a time where you didn't feel like being so risky, but you didn't know what else to do. And you knew that you needed to move from that season to the next. And as being women and and broadcasting, you get or any field, you get so much criticism, rejection, everything. And I thought, can I handle this after what I've been through? And you know, starting over in midlife, who who can do that? And I just thought, you know, I've been re the rejection. You know, you've had it in broadcasting and everything yes. else. It's just part of the career. We we just learn to. Um, you know, whatever happens to make the best of it and move on and, and take whatever opportunities we're presented with. It's true. And you're right. There's a lot of criticism that comes with this, whether it's the radio or in music or in acting or in television show hosting, whatever it is, 
you're putting yourself out there and you're opening yourself up to all kinds of rejection. And it's hard for a lot of people and some people, and I know for myself, I waited. Um, this is something that, you know, acting was something I always wanted to do from the time I was three years old. I knew that's what I was supposed to do. And I was that kid that would, you know, put on plays in the neighborhood and sell tickets and do all of that. And then I would sing and, and all these different things. But I didn't have the confidence page back then because of my upbringing. I didn't feel good enough about myself back then to even try for it because I felt like, well, if if I get rejected in the way yeah. that I had been rejected growing up, then that might make it true. And I know that's not true, but in my mind back then, that's how it was for me. And I, I think that's true for a lot of people. And I love that you got to a point where you said, you know what, I've lost my husband. I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life, but I'm going to try something new and see if it sticks and see how yeah. I'm received. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I did that one and then someone else asked me if I would um, want to play another character and he drives at night. I played a prostitute of all things. And you know what? It was a campy horror film and I loved it. And so that was just a complete departure of what I am, obviously. And um, I, I just keep growing and growing, growing as a person. And after I did that, the second film, I decided I'm going to produce my own film. And that's what women are doing in Hollywood. They're paving their own way. Um, so I've been working on a film that was based here on South Carolina story. Um, that's based in the 1800s. And it's a very famous historical figure. And I'm so excited to bring that to light. And the script's going to be finished probably this year. And we'll help probably start shooting in the fall. And but in the meantime, um, I know you've met Ellie Conrad and she wrote We Five. So there's another woman that is out there paving her own way. And We Five is incredible. I'm just so blessed that I, I was cast in that. And that's uh, a series that's being shot in the upstate. And we've also filmed uh, weeks ago in Charleston, myself, Chad Dudley, um, writer Chad Dudley in the upstate. Eric Roberts and his wife, Eliza, Ellie, um, Paul Butler. I mean, the cast is just growing. And so we, we did the pilot and we're just seeing where it goes. I mean, I had a tiny, tiny role, but I am so grateful that, um, you know, who knows where this will go. Well, and that's just, hoping... that's just it. You know, when we get, when doors open, we need to walk through them a lot of times because we don't know. Um, I had posted something on social media a while back and I was just having a day where doors kept slamming and that rejection that we're talking about just kept happening. Yeah. I thought, and I wrote this something about, um, I said, if, if the door keeps slamming or whatever, mm -hmm. it's slamming in your face, you know, stop trying to go through it because you might not want to know what's behind there. Right. But you know, because seriously, I'm like, okay, God knows what's going on. That's not for me. I need to not go that way. But if opportunities just tend to flow toward us, I really believe that that's the favor that we, that God gives us. And it's like, you know what, let's try it. And if we find out page that it's not for us, fine, then we'll pivot and we'll go another way. But we owe it to ourselves as creatives and as people in general to just find out with these opportunities, where does that lead us in life? And never think, because I know that Frances McDermott, I think that's her name, she just won an Oscar for No Man Land. And one mm -hmm. of the quotes that she said is um, she was told that she wasn't pretty enough, she wasn't skinny enough, she wasn't, she wasn't enough until they finally found her. And you can't be perfect. You're never going to be perfect. I mean, if you, you just need to try it. If that's in your heart, you need to try it. And as far as grief, and I know we touched on grief before, it is so hard to get through the sadness. I mean, I stayed home and cried for days and days and days. And it's it's hard to get through. And people, they deal with grief on their own terms. And I can't sit here and say, yeah, everything was magically fixed. No, it's not. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Still trying to become who I am because automatically in one night 24 hours i was a widow and i had to face everything by myself and my friends are saying now 
that they just didn't know what to say to me. And, you know, they probably should have reached out more, but people don't know unless you, unless you communicate and say, you know, I'm lonely. Can you include me? But everybody, they want to give you time to breathe. And it's just, nobody really knows to do or say. And, and I'm trying to tell people, do something, call people. If you know that someone passed away, talk to them. Even if you don't know what to say, say something, you know, or if you can't, if you don't know what to say, just sit with the person and right. let them cry. When I went through, so six years ago, I lost several people, I lost three people in a six week period. And on top of losing a business and some other things, there was eight things on the life index scale. If anybody's mm -hmm. into psychology, eight things that you can only handle one at, at a time. I had eight at the same time. And every two weeks, something traumatic was happening and everyone in my life of course my husband and my kids were here thank god on oh, my husband I, I can't tell everyone in the world how much i love my husband he's an amazing person um but he stood by me and of course my kids but i had one friend that stayed with me for that first year and i wrote my first book was about this same thing and it's about being alone in that wilderness and it's a journey a 50 day or 50 week journey however you move through your grief cycle but from pain toward wellness and it's an it's an honest look at what it feels like to completely grieve the loss of someone and how alone you feel and when no one's calling you also there's there's no sound there's there's no text there's no call there's nothing and it will change you i mean above and beyond what you lost, then you, you look and, and it's devastating. But I will tell you, and, and I want to know if this was your experience as well, but as I was writing the book and I asked God, I said, you know, cause I couldn't even pray. And I mean, all if for weeks and stuff. And um, I finally said, you know, why have you left me alone to go through this? And he told me it's because everything else was white noise. And he wanted me to hear just his voice during that time. And I know that's different for everyone. But for me, I guess I am susceptible, Paige, to what other people think and feel. And so he needed to just blur that out for me. Mm -hmm. That makes complete sense. And you have to look at the signs that you get messages from some something. And I remember when my grandmother died, she loved butterflies. And I was sitting on the dock just crying because I lost her. And that's the reason why I moved here is because she she had cancer. I was working and living in California. And I remember sitting on the dock up in the mountains and seeing two monarch butterflies kind of intermingle and fly up to the sky. And I kind of had a relief thinking, that's her telling me to let it go, to yeah. stop the pain and let it go because she's not in pain anymore. She, she can breathe now and she's happy and it just there are things that i don't know how to fix the sorrow for people and people grieve through divorce so many other things and for me um it was just i just wanted to be alone for the longest time i slept a lot i mean i and i asked my doctor do you think i should am i depressed or he says no it's just just grief it's grief and people grieve differently and there's no easy fix. And I know people that have lost others that they're, that they're still grieving after 10 years. And I can't say, well, you need to get over it because sometimes you never, you never get no, over it. Because I still reach for the phone to tell my mom. I talk to my mom every single day for hours. And I always joke that because she was a huge talker. Um, mm -hmm. And apparently I have picked that up, but I would put her on speakerphone and I would be in the kitchen and catering and doing all these different things for three hours. And she would talk and I would listen and I would work and I still go to call her. And when something goes on in my life, whether it's good or bad, she's my go-to. She's who I want to tell. And even the other night, now it's been six and a half years. The other night something happened and I looked at my husband and I said, it's not that he doesn't do a great job, but he, he does. But I said, I need to talk to my mom. I just need to talk to my mom. And I can't. Yeah. And it brings tears to my eyes even still. And 
you know, we're so close to our moms and we're so close to our spouses and knowing how close I am to my husband, it hurts my heart so badly for you. Mm -hmm. And, and I, sorry, isn't a strong enough word, you know? Um, yeah. it, and I, I lost my mom this past year. So I was just thinking mother's day is going to be really hard, but yeah, with her, I know the situation that she had Alzheimer's and she's just, in a, I hate to say it, but she's in such a better place. But still, like picking up the phone, just any accomplishments or any any failures, you call your mama. It's like, I need you, mom. And I understand because I don't have a mom or a dad. So I'm kind of on there by myself trying to face it. And you've got to find joys and happiness wherever they are. For me, I picked up acting and also I have a job that every day it's great and it, it makes me smile and i like working with the people that i work with at the radio station and you know it you just positive energy it attracts positive things to you and if you don't want yeah. really the negativity and the people saying oh, you can't be an actress at your age or you you can't do this you can't do that i'm just whatever opportunities i get i i've just been completely grateful and and filming the pilot in Charleston with with such great actors. I mean, I did a scene with Eric Eric Roberts and how about um, that? Uh, how about that? You know, I went from just sitting in my living room crying four years ago, and now I'm I'm working and walking with people in Hollywood and just and they are the nicest people. There, it's not what I ever thought would happen to me, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to enjoy the ride. <laughs> but there's such a great message in that because you're right. Things will happen to us negatively and we have to process it. And we and it's you know, we have to do that. But we can't sit there. We can't remain there. We have to move forward and hopefully great things are going to happen. And we need to say yes to opportunities, which is exactly what you did. And now you're out here playing and having fun. Mm -hmm. And in essence, acting is playing. I mean, I love it. You know, it's just you get to be somebody else for a little while. And it, and it's one of the things because I can see you beaming as we're talking about it. And it's what makes your soul sing. And you're impacting people and loving on people. And you have to, I mean, I'm not, you know, before I started filming, I thought, gosh, I didn't get to the gym as much as I wanted to. I wanted to lose all the weight that I gained when I was sitting home and eating ice cream, feeling sorry for myself after my husband died. But you yeah. can't wait till when it's perfect because it's never going to be perfect. And I went at it to do it. And now I've got just so many things and offers coming my, my way. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be doing a horror film that's kind of like in pre-production. And then I have um, Chad Dudley is a wonderful mystery murder writer. And um, he's cast me in his the, the movie about his book, The Next, I'll be playing yes. a fun character named Erica, and I'm excited to bring her to life, and then the big movie, Lavinia, that I'm doing, um, I'm excited about that. That is going to be phenomenal, and that's going to be shot here in the upstate and um, in Charleston, and just so many other things that just keep coming up, and then working with the radio station, and having concerts again, and, and working with Rise guys, I'm just completely blessed that I have such a great life. You but, do. But you have to step out of the shadows. You have to get out, out of the darkness. And I, my message, if I can just tell one person, I've been there. I know how you feel. Um, reach out to somebody, talk to someone to say, I don't feel good. I really don't. I've been through this. Maybe you've had COVID or you've lost someone to COVID. We, this whole country has been through just so much with stress but if you're depressed talk to somebody do something that gives you joy and don't beat yourself up that's the message that I want to give people don't beat yourself up if you're not perfect because nobody's perfect that's it and depression and anxiety are through the roof right now oh, as a result of covid and people have ptsd all over the place people who are taking medications that never had to take them before and if you've had a bad case of covid many people have side effects in fact i have mm -hmm. side effects from i had covid pneumonia uh, back in January and February, I was very, very sick. And I do have a couple of weird side effects and I don't know if they'll ever go away. But also going through all of this, people have changed. 
Um, wow. They've changed in some bad ways, but they've changed in some good ways too, in that we understand our mortality a little bit better now. We understand that life is precious and there, there's no time like the present to go after what we want. And if you've got a dream hidden in your back pocket, now's the time to get out there and try to make it happen. What's the worst thing that's going to happen to you if it doesn't go the way that you want? Maybe you... You want yeah. to be an actor, you want to be a singer. Okay, maybe it's taken a little while to take off or maybe you didn't get that part or you didn't get chosen for that gig. Oh, well, come back, process, get back out there. And just because someone says you're not pretty or you're not right or you're not this, you're not that, well, mm -hmm. oh, well, because everybody's beautiful in their own way. You That's may right. not be to someone else and someone may reject you, but you can't take it personally because someone else is going to find you beautiful someone's going to find you intelligent someone's going, there is someone out there for you to be an actor to be a stockbroker whatever you want to do just don't don't listen to the the people that say you can't because you can if you want to because you know what it comes down to none of us are guaranteed another day yeah. we're not i mean and, and you don't want to go through it and have shoulda coulda woulda and I'm not preaching or anything but it's true if I, if I wouldn't have gone to do some I mean I was on a very 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 bad path of just coming home every day and shutting myself into my my home and talking to my pets all day long and I mean they're wonderful animals but I need people I need contact with the human world and get out there and kind of live you've got to live again I, I think we all need to live again and respect each other and not tear each other down on facebook or you know whatever well, social media. and you know this about me i am all about women supporting other women mm -hmm. i really don't have a lot of time for women who want to say negative things about each other or try to manipulate or take from mm -hmm. another woman um that this isn't the time we need to lift each other up we need to celebrate mm -hmm. not tolerate uh, I just, I don't want that in my life. I want to be surrounded by positive people who lift each other's up and, or like they say, straighten each other's crowns without even saying anything. Right. And, because and, You know, if anybody has something to, or does something to make them feel better, I'm all for it. I'm not saying that, you know, um, even if you want to have cosmetic surgery, do it for yourself, but don't do it for anybody else. Make yourself feel good and do it for you because, you know, you're the only one that matters and you are responsible of making yourself happy. Nobody's going to make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. And I've learned that in relationships when I hear people say, well, he didn't make me happy. No, you made yourself unhappy. That's usually what happens. A relationship, a, another member in the relationship should compliment you, not define you. Um, it needs to be in addition to, and you have to right. be happy with yourself first. You know, that's what they say. You can't really love other people until you love yourself, right? Right. And there's nothing wrong with being alone. There's nothing wrong with not getting out there and, you know, because a lot of us are afraid of dating right now because of COVID and everything like that. And I completely understand. But you have to get out and live life. You need, everybody needs friends. You need to yep. do things that are fun. I mean, now that things, people are getting back, and people are going out, so I think this summer it's going to change a lot, but you know, we have to remember the elderly people that are home. We have to take care of our family members. We have to not burn bridges and put pettiness aside and just be better people. And that's what I've been trying to do is be the best that I can be for myself because I know what it's like to be miserable. I know what it's like to, to feel sorry for myself. I, I, you know, I, had, I threw a pity party for a year, basically. And I don't want to do that anymore. So. And I feel like, too, if we ever get those minutes where you get like a nudge, you, a name will come to your mind or whatever, you need to reach out to that person, whether it's a text or an email, a call, whatever. Just let them know that you're thinking about them. And so often people are alone because others assume that 
they have everybody around them. And so mm -hmm. they, they stay away for that reason too. But then sadly, the people are actually all by themselves and they're trying to grieve whatever it is alone. And then they become even more depressed. So if you've, if you've got the opportunity, reach out to people, check on them. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, if you want to find out more about me, um, I'm at um, 938planetrocks.com. That's the website. And you can find out you know, the radio station that I work for. I do the news on the Rise Guys morning show. And then I have a midday show from 10 to 2 on 93.3 to Planet Rocks. And on my IDMB page, um, I don't have my headshot done yet. I'm working on that. But it's under Charlotte Page. Page, Charlotte and P A I G E is my ID and B page. And you can check yep. out all the stuff that I'm working on. And if anybody wants to get into acting and they haven't, just you know, go to some talent agencies and do extra work or or do local theater or dance. I mean, just do what makes you feel good because you know, it's worth it to get out there and have fun. That's all I do. I'm not trying to become famous because I think fame is fleeting and, you know, you just, you have to enjoy what you're doing. And when I was filming for one big hour on my small little part, that hour went, it seemed like it was 10 minutes. It went so fast that I do it again every single day because it was so much fun. I love that. That's great <laughs> advice. So if you want it, go out and get it. Don't sit here and wait for FedEx to bring it, right? <laughs> just right. get out there and make your life happen. And so again, everybody needs to get with her on Instagram. She is in the series We Five that is in production right now. It is a dramatic mini series with a hint of comedy. Um, they're shooting that in South Carolina. They are shooting it at other places across the country, but there's a lot of it that's being done in South Carolina. So I encourage you guys in the fall to make sure uh, we're expecting that humbly expecting that to come out in the fall so make sure that you get up with that get um get page 93.3 make sure that you're listening to her show and to the rise guys she's got a lot of things going on so be sure to follow her so right. Paige, real quick real I'm quick so before we go i'm so proud of chad dudley chad dudley yeah. the actor in we five he has a volatile role and he's doing fantastic and i just I'm so excited to see where it goes. Well, we're expecting great things from that production and from you, all of the wonderful things that you're doing and your outlook on everything is wonderful. And I know that you've got such a great testimony and, and you know, just things for people to, to look to and to aspire to because going through what you went through was horrific. And look at you now. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. That's all I have to say. I mean, from where I started to where I want to be, I'm not anywhere near where I want to be, but um, I'm just so grateful. Every day I get in my car on my way to work and I just, I thank God, thank you for giving me another day to live. And that's all I do, so I take it every day. That's and that's it. all we all can do. We should be grateful that we're on this beautiful planet for another day. That's exactly right. My friend, Paige, so glad you were here. Come back and see us again. I'll be talking to you soon. Um, she and I have so much in common. It's really interesting. And we actually lived in the same city in um, California. I'm from California as well. But um, in the Bay Area, we lived yeah. in the same city. Didn't even know that. So that's kind of interesting. Fun. <laughs> Yeah, it is fun, which is probably why I fell in love with her immediately. I'm on the phone with her talking and I'm going, oh, my gosh, we are so much alike. It's crazy. So <laughs> I'm sure we'll be great friends. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Come back and see us. And I'm going to be watching everything that's going on with you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. How magnificent is she? How much do you love her? I know she is. She's awesome. You guys, I'm so glad that you were here. I want to thank our sponsors once again. Let me run that across the ticker. You know, I love what we're talking about. I know it's kind of a deeper subject, but it's something that we have to deal with. People are hurting all over the place, especially right now. Um, this is an unprecedented time, as you well know. So many of you have lost people, or maybe you too have gone through some horrific things. Maybe you've had COVID um, and it was really, really hard. Maybe you are grieving the loss of someone that you love. I encourage you, if you are feeling anxious or depressed, please seek treatment. Please reach out to a friend. Um, talk to your pastor, talk to somebody. Don't just sit there in that. You don't have to sit there and suffer in that. There's Nobody's going to hand you a medal at the end of the day if you went through it all by yourself and didn't seek treatment. If you need the help, 
get the help. Okay. I love you. Um, I hope that you come back and see us next time. And until you do, make sure that you are healthy and well, make sure that you are loving and kind. And as always, be humble.